morning. Just letting everybody in here real quick. Good morning, good morning. Who else is trying to get in here? Joellen, that's a pretty name. I like that. I've never heard that or seen that, but I, I like that name, Joellen. That's really pretty. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Almost ready to get started there. All right. Just trying to answer everybody's text messages. How do I get in? All right. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see your face. All right. Um, I will let continue to let people in as they show up. Um, welcome. Uh, this is Sphere of Influence Strategies. Um, mastering the art of creating a sphere from scratch quickly. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about why I created this class for y'all. Um, I noticed, um, I ran into, you know, I was just online in a bunch of the groups that I'm in. And I noticed a lot of people mentioning, I'm new to an area, just moved to Dallas or just moved to Houston or wherever they moved to. And I'm a new realtor or I've been in real estate for a long time and I just moved to a new place and I don't know what to do, like how do I get started from scratch? I don't have a sphere of net, uh, a network here. I don't have any friends, I don't have any family here. And that inspired me to say, you know what, I can help with that because I have actually picked up my business and moved it four times across four different states. And of course did not have family or friends in any of those locations, had never been to any of those locations. So I knew no one. Um, and I've been in real estate 25 years, started in Virginia. My name is Laura Dahl, in case y'all don't know me, um, but I started in Virginia. My mom was a realtor, um, and then I moved to South Carolina, opened my own firm, um, sold that to Coldwell Banker, um, and moved to North Carolina for 10 months, 
uh, where I just um, needed a break from real estate. It was at the height of 2010 or 2009, you know, right after the crash of 08. Um, and, uh, you know, just taught some high school kids for those nine months, took a breather and then moved to Nashville, Tennessee and had to start all over again. And then I moved back to North Carolina, um, was starting all over again. So I have a little bit of experience of moving to a new location without having a network, without having, um, a, a huge following or, um, you know, and so I just saw that so many people, yes, this is recorded, Joellen. Um, I, I just saw that so many people were struggling with something that I've had a lot of experience with. And so I just wanted to help if I could. Um, and, and this applies to you, even if you're not brand new to an area, maybe you just really don't have an extensive network or you don't have an extensive um, sphere of influence, or you've never even really thought do I even have one? So um, that is why I'm here. That's why I created this this class just for y'all. Um, is is just that it is very difficult when you move from one place to another, especially if you had a great successful business where you're coming from. But it can be done. You can create a network from scratch, knowing zero people. Um, and I've got some strategies for you that I want to share with you. So first of all. You know, what is a sphere of influence? And and I know y'all are going to laugh at me like we don't need you to define it for us. But the reality is that it is a network of people that you know or that know, like, and trust you and would therefore be likely to do business with you or refer business to you in the future. Um, you know, your sphere is basically who you surround yourself with. It is who you talk to on a daily basis. It's who you play with, who you worship with, who you hang out with. Like, it's just who you spend time with. But they are people who know you, they like you, and they trust you. They're just not random strangers. That doesn't make up your sphere. Uh, but you're going to turn random strangers into your sphere if you don't have it. So why is it so important? Uh, first and foremost, it's a source of referrals. It is a place where they are going to be turning into a community of advocates for you. They are not just looking for people to hand your business card to. They are actually looking for opportunities for you in your business. So they are basically you're creating relationships with people so that they understand who you're looking to work with, who you want to work with, and then they are... Um, you know, those are the people that are going to send you business uh, opportunities in the future, or they're looking for opportunities for you. The other thing I want you to know about your sphere of influence is that um, much like your database, it might be a sellable asset in the future. If you are thinking of getting out of the business or retiring, um, your sphere properly input into a database is and could be a sellable asset in the future. When I sold um, my company in South Carolina, that database was actually worth uh, tens of thousands of dollars uh, to that company because I had already created a huge network uh, from scratch, from the ground up. And so you just remember that you are the special sauce to that sphere of influence. They know you, like you, and trust you. Um, and so that asset might not be as worth, might not be as valuable to somebody else, but it is and can be a very lucrative asset. Um, that you can later sell. The other thing that I love about it is it is a roadmap of who to talk to. I coach so many agents that are like, I don't know who to talk to. I don't have anybody. All of my people have already bought houses or have already extracted everything out of my network that I possibly can. So I don't even know who I'm supposed to be marketing to or who to talk to. And and I, a lot of the biggest issues that I have with with agents is that when we talk, you know, I find out and discover very quickly that they don't, they don't talk to enough people, period. You know, um, they are nowhere near making the number of contacts that they need to, to achieve the income goals that they have. And so what I love about creating a sphere from scratch and the way I'm going to teach you how to do it is that it gives you a roadmap of who to reach out to who to talk to, who to make appointments with. It actually is a script for you to follow or a recipe or a prescription for you to follow of who do I need to meet with and who do I need to talk to. Um, so if you're brand new to an area, you will have more appointments than you probably have hours in the day if you follow this plan. But the thing is, is it actually will give you a roadmap of who to talk to. So real quick, before I go any further, if you would, in the chat, tell me, 
how long you've been in real estate and let me know if you're new to an area or something so that I know who my audience is for a second. So drop me in the chat, how long you've been in real estate or if you're new to an area um, so that I know what who I'm talking to here so I can give you guys some specific advice if you don't mind. I don't see anything in the chat yet. <laughs> it's coming, maybe. There we go. All right. Okay. New to residential. Okay, that's that's important because your sphere changes sometimes too. Two days, not new to the area. Wow, Jen, welcome to the business. Holy cow. Um, yes, yes, new to Tennessee. All right, love it. Okay, so this is going to be helpful to y'all. I just like to know who I'm talking to so that I can kind of direct some of the things that I have to share with you. All right, so let's talk about how to get started. First and foremost, my opinion, I think you need to do your research. I think you need to research the area that you're living in. Six years in West Tennessee, awesome. Um, I, I think you need to do some research in the area that you're moving to or the area that you're living in. Or even if you're just starting over, you recognize that your sphere needs to expand um, and you should be constantly adding to that sphere all the time too, but you should be identifying target demographics for you. So study your competition, know who the agents, who the big players are in the area, know what companies exist. Uh, you should have an idea of which agents specialize in certain things. Like, are there agents in your area that, um, you know, are specialists in waterfront property? Are there areas... Agents that specialize in short-term rentals. Are there agents that specialize in land? You should have a great idea of who the big players are in your market um, so that you have an idea of, is this any niche that I'm trying to do? Is it saturated or, you know, who the big people are? A lot of times the Real Producers Magazine will tell you too, like who the big hitters are in the area. Um, that is not to scare you and that is not for you to be intimidated. It is for you to know who the power players are in the area. It's for you to know what kind of production the agents are doing around you. I think the more you're armed with that kind of demographics, that kind of data, the better you are to develop your own plan of how to succeed in that area. Number two, you need to have an idea of who you're looking for. And if you've talked to me at all, and I know Rachel and Kim are tired of hearing me say this, but you have to have a very defined target client. You need to know who your target is. Who are you looking to, for to work with? It's like if I tell you I want to buy a red car and now all of a sudden all you see for three weeks is a red car. This is the same exact thing. When you get crystal clear about who you want to work with, when you really truly define the characteristics of who your target client is, then you can develop an action plan of how to get in front of them. How can I market my business to them? Where can I put myself so that they see me, that they interact with me, that they know I'm an agent? But if you don't know who you're looking for, how can you do that? You're just looking for anybody that wants to buy or sell a house. That's not, we don't want you fishing from the stock ocean. We want you fishing from the stock pond of your people, right? So I need you to be really crystal clear on who you want to work with and who it is you're looking for and have some really good characteristics of who this target client is. Um, that list should include where they work. Um, do they have kids? Do they play sports? What are their hobbies? Are they runners? Are they, what religion are they? What, you know, what do they spend their money on? Are they bourbon collectors? You really need to get to know your people that you relate to best. What are their characteristics? Do they make a certain income? Did they go to a certain college? Do they have a certain profession? dial deep on who that target client is and stop fishing for just anybody that wants to buy a house and get crystal clear on looking for your people. Who do you relate best to? I always think when I explain this to agents, I always think of like the brand new agent who just got a license yesterday, who's driving like a jalopy, you know, with the door hanging off and it's held together by duct tape. And they walk into my office and they say, I want to specialize in luxury listings. Okay, we've got a disconnect there. Those probably aren't your people. You probably don't socialize with, with people that are luxury buyers or sellers. Um, not that that's an indicator, but I'm just saying 
do you have an opportunity to interact with the people that you're actually trying to attract? Do you have anything in common with them? Are you relatable to them? Do you even have access to them? So that's my point is if you want to be in luxury, do you have access to where people who make that kind of money that can afford luxury houses hang out? Do you play golf at the golf club with them? Do you, are you members of the country club? Are you, do you have similar circles? It doesn't mean you can't sell luxury listings if you're not, but I just want you to think about, do I have access to the people I'm looking for? How do I access them? Right. Number three, I want you to think about what are your interests? You should make a list of your own hobbies, activities that you participate in, things that are important to you in terms of your passions, things that are important to you in terms of um, your excitement, what gets you going in the morning. Um, are you a runner? Are you a crafter? Are you a knitter? Are you a homeschooler? Are you, um, you know, higher education? Are you a cook? Are you a bourbon drinker? Like, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? First of all, you need to remember people don't like to be sold to. No one wants to be sold to, right? They want to make friends. They want to have connections with people. They want to have authentic, true relationships with people. And so <clears throat> I'm asking you to make a list of your hobbies and your activities so that you can engage in things that you like. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go out and force themselves to go out in the community to do things that they hate. Like, you know, that's why door knocking doesn't work for most people because they hate it, right? Don't come to my door, don't get my dogs involved. But our, I would love to go talk to somebody about gardening if that's my passion, or I would love to help a community garden if that's something I'm really good at, and we'll get into that. But you have to know yourself first. What do you like to do? What are you interested in? And then number four is I want you to get crystal clear on your goals. What, how do you wanna engage with your sphere and how often? And the reason I put this here is because there are a lot of people in real estate that are actually pretty introverted, right? They're not like me. I can yeah. pick up a conversation with a stranger anywhere, right? I've never met a stranger actually, but there are a lot of people who are very introverted that um, are not good at just going out and talking to people. They're, they're shy. It takes them longer to warm up, right? So I want you to ask yourself, what do you want this to look like? Do you want to be invited to family dinners? Do you want to come to their baby showers? Do you want to be invited to their weddings? Do you want to be a part of their lives and all the milestones that are included in it? Or do you just want to sell houses and you're not really trying to be friends? You need to ask yourself that because not everybody works the way I do. I want all my clients to be my friends. They become my family. But that's different for me than it is for some agents, right? I actually coached an agent um, we were in a session uh, last week or the week before where she said, how do I keep all my clients from wanting to be my friends? And she didn't want to be their friends. And so I'm shocked by that because again, I want you to be my friend because I want you looking out for me. I want you to seek opportunities for me. I want to know what's going on in your life beyond just selling you a house or helping you sell your house. But you've got to get clear on your goals. What do you want this to look like? How often do you want to engage with them? And what does your engagement with them look like? Some people are very surface level. They don't want to post pictures of their kids, which I understand their safety concerns, but they don't want people knowing all about their personal life. They want to keep their clients and their business separated. I am here to tell you, I don't know that it's possible to be as successful as you want to without letting people behind, letting people into your life at least these days in the kind of market that we're in, where people are hungry for personalized service, where they are hungry for personal attention, where they are hungry for a personal relationship. And post COVID, we've all got some walls up because we kept ourselves in our little bubbles and we wanted to protect ourselves and our families. And now that has lowered a little bit, but we're still not letting people all the way in. We've got them almost at an arm's distance now. Close enough, but not super close. And so I want you to ask yourself, what do you want? Do you want to be friends? Do you want them to be family? Do you want to have some clear boundaries and keep them at a distance? That's yours, your choice. But I do want you to define it and think about it, what that looks like before you start creating a sphere and it gets out of control and then you have it's too late to put boundaries in place. Does that make sense to everybody? Awesome. Thank you for shaking your head, Rachel. That tells me I was on the right track. I appreciate that. Step number one, let's start with who you already know. 
Uh, I do not take credit for this. This is a Michael Mayer worksheet. You can Google and find it online. Uh, but it is the seven levels of communication is the name of the book. Uh, Michael Mayer has something called the ultimate memory jogger. And you can just Google memory jogger and it will come up. What I'm going to tell you right now is that I have used this document at least four times. Every time I move, I pull this document out. I start from scratch. This document is basically, who do you know already? And so what I tell people is you go through the document and on a spreadsheet, you could write it on the paper if you want, but you might as well put it in your database. And so start on a spreadsheet. That way you can just import it into your database, or your CRM. But you start through the memory jogger and you identify who do you know. Go through your phone, go through your contacts, uh, go through your friends list on Facebook, but you're going to go through and identify all the people. And so everybody's going to start out really easy with, oh, yeah, all my family. Even if your family is not in the same area you're in, write them down. Doesn't matter. Write them down. Because, again, they are still prospects for you for opportunities for referral business anywhere in the country. Your parents might live in Iowa, but they might know friends buying in California. They might have friends all across the country that you can leverage that relationship and earn referral checks, which I call mailbox money, by engaging your sphere, even though your sphere might not be local. So don't discount people that don't live where you live. Rachel, you still have tons of contacts in Arizona, right? Those people could be living anywhere in the country or moving anywhere in the country. You don't forget about them just because you moved to a different state. You're still going to let them know, I can help you anywhere in the country find an amazing agent, right? So don't discount people just because they're not your local sphere. Your sphere includes anybody and everybody you have a relationship with, okay? So you're gonna go through the document, you're gonna identify who you know. Um, so that's your first step. Your second step, let me get back to my, uh, your second step, and that's six pages of people. So you're gonna start with who you know, and then you're going to identify who you need to meet. So when you go back to that document and you get to a category, that, and I'll go back to it real quick. When you get to a category where you don't have someone listed, so as I scroll down the page, um, and let's say I get to page two or three, where it says firemen. Maybe I don't know any firemen. But on step number two, what I'm gonna do is highlight the categories where I don't know anybody. When you're new to town, guess what? There's gonna be a lot of categories you don't know anybody, right? But remember what I told you, this is going to be the script to tell you who you need to go meet, right? So if I know I don't know a single fireman, one day I'm going to go pick up lunch and I'm going to drop it off at the fire station and meet some fire. Or maybe I drop off a dozen donuts to the fireman and introduce myself, right? Whatever that is. But um, you're going to go through the list and say, who do I know in each of these categories? Now, some of these categories, you may not care to know anybody. Maybe you live somewhere where you're like, I don't really need to know somebody in livestock. Totally fine. Skip it. I don't care. But the point is, is it gives you so many categories of people that you can go meet. And so let's talk about how you meet them for a second. Because now you have a highlighted list of categories. You're like, oh, um, I am looking for somebody who does self-defense, right? Because maybe I want to host a self-defense class for the moms in my mom group right? Something like that. So you can do one of two things. The first thing is, is you're going to be active on social media in various groups in your area, I would hope. You might go online and ask, I am looking for a self-defense person to teach a course for me. Who do you guys know? So you can ask for solicitation of, of recommendations from other people, or you can go through and just Google and do your own vetting and your own, you know, research to see who you want to meet. Um, when it comes to like divorce attorneys or dentists or veterinarians or those kinds of categories, you might want to know five or six of each of those categories, not just one, right? You might want to have a whole list of painters, a whole list of landscapers, a whole list of pool people. But it gives you at least a category to say, I don't know anybody in this space. I need to go meet them. And so you can either ask for recommendations of people online or in your local community, or you can Google them yourself and do your own research and find the people. Now, if you're doing step number one, where people recommended someone to you, the phone call looks like this. 
Hi, my name is Laura Dahl with Epic Realty. I just moved to the Asheville area and um, I am trying to build my list of vendors that, or my list of people that I can refer and recommend to my client base as I grow my business. I would love to get to know you and your business and meet you. Do you have some time for coffee or lunch or drink or whatever it is that you're in? Just so I can get to know you better. Or like if people recommended them the script, that would be number two. If people recommended them, the script is I'm looking to build my network and I asked for recommendations and your name kept coming up. You're highly recommended. People have a lot of respect for you. I can tell that you run your business much like mine. And that means that you're somebody I should probably know. Would you like to get together to have coffee or lunch so that I can get a chance to get to know you? Because I would love to be able to. That's the script. Right? That makes sense to everybody? Right. It's easy. It's just, I want to know you. I want to know more about your business. Now, here's the thing. If you go to that meeting and you try to sell yourself at that meeting, you've already lost. Nobody wants to be sold to. I'll say that five more times before I leave if you want. But you're not. your job is not to sell yourself to these people. Your job is to get to know them. How can I help you build your business? Tell me about who your target client is. Who do you typically work with? Who do you like to work with? Tell me about the characteristics of the people that you're looking for to help you build your business. Because I want to be on the lookout for opportunities for you as well. As I'm growing my business, I want to look for places that I can prompt you, that I can promote you, that I can help send people your way. But if you spent that whole meeting talking about yourself and what makes you so wonderful, what do you know about this person? Nothing. So I don't want you to take those meetings to sell yourself. I want you to take those meetings to learn about them. How can you pour into them? What kinds of services and value can you offer them? Who are they looking for? Tell me about their red car so that I can be on the lookout for them. I hope that that makes sense. So number one is to figure out who you already know. Step two is to identify who you need to meet. Um, and you're going to go through and either ask for recommendations or you're going to research it yourself. And then you're going to ask for a meeting with those people. I will tell you before you show up for any of these meetings, you need to get your collateral materials ready. So if you're brand new to the business, you're going to actually create a couple of things and make sure you have a few things in your arsenal. And even if you've been in the market a long time, you've been in business forever, then I want you to Make sure that your materials are updated, that they look presentable the way that you want them to. And a couple of suggestions of things that I think you should have. One of them is called a one sheet. A one sheet is basically an introduction of you to your clients or to your referral partners. It is gonna have a picture of you. It's gonna have your contact information. It's gonna have bullet points about what makes you unique what makes you special, why someone would want to work with you, and maybe it has two or three testimonials on it. But it is basically you in a snapshot. This is not a three-page brochure. This is not a three-ring binder of information about you. This is not your resume and your full personal history. This is a snapshot, and it is the first introduction of you and your business to the people that you're meeting, okay? So you should have your one sheet um, if you're looking for an example of that, reach out to me privately and I will send you some examples. But a one sheet is your first piece of collateral material that I would recommend you have so that when you take these meetings with the fireman, with the dentist, with the divorce attorney, with the funeral home director, whoever it is you're meeting, that this piece of collateral is, goes in every single hand of those people. Okay, it's an introduction of you and your business. You also may wanna have that one sheet as a PDF and a JPEG on your phone. And that may be something you text people when you're meeting them, when you're scheduling the appointment and you send them the calendar link. You also attach your one sheet to it. Hey, save this to your phone so that you have it in the event that you run into somebody that I might be able to help in the future. That might be your follow-up after your meeting that you send to them, right? If you don't want to send it on the front end. Um, the other thing is you should have your presentations. If you are meeting with a vendor partner that works with a lot of potential buyers, maybe you go through your buyer presentation at some point with them, or maybe you show them a copy of it so they can see how prepared you are and what kind of information you're sharing with their potential buyers, right? 
if you are working, if you're looking, this kind of contact is somebody who might be um, sending you um, any kind of uh, referrals for anything. So like working with investors or builders or developers. I have presentations for all of those. If I'm meeting with a human resources manager for a small company, I have a presentation that talks about how I help their relocation clients uh, assimilate and get situated in the area faster, right? But I have presentations for each type of meeting that I'm having. And before you go out, do you have to have all this? No. So the, here's the operative word I want you to hear. When I was putting this class together, I said how to create a sphere of influence from scratch quickly. The quickly part is for most of us, it takes us years to build a network. You know, I lived in Nashville for 14 years. I built an amazing network in 14 years over time, but we don't always have the luxury of time, right? We need a sale today. We need a sale in the next 30, 60, 90 days, or we want to fill our pipeline for the whole year. And so in order to do that quickly, don't wait till you have all these presentations perfect and ready to go. You can have all of these meetings with just the one sheet or your business card. You don't have to have the formal things and don't make those a roadblock to get in your way of taking action to create the meeting. I'm just telling you, if you want to up your level of your game and you want to be more professional, have your collateral materials ready. There is a list of collateral materials that I think you all need in your business, not just to build your sphere, but there is a whole list of this. I will actually... Um, before I hang up, I'll actually uh, drop that in the chat for you and grab the link for it. Um, if I forget for some reason, someone remind me if you don't, um, because I get excited. I start talking and I forget what I was going to do. So I do have a list of collateral materials that you all might need in your business. And then when it comes to items of value, this is where the power is, is in the follow-up of these meetings. You're going to make the meeting with the people, but is that a relationship? No. The relationship is built over time and you're going to have additional meetings with them in the future. You're going to want to have an arsenal of things of value that you can give to people, whether that is a market report that talks about the statistics in the, in the area. If it is a list of, um, you know, uh, best places uh, to hike in your area or you just want to have things that you can share with people, things that you can send to them. It might be a home buyer's guide, a home seller's guide. It might be a how to prep your house for sale. I want you to think of all the things that, that these type of people might want information for and do you have something of value that you can give to them or send to them later in your follow-up, okay? Um, my goal is not to give you all the answers, but to wet your whistle to get you thinking about it. So, so let's talk about some strategies that work. Uh, first of all, community events are huge with establishing yourself. So be present at, get booths at, uh, participate in, show up to community events like farmer's markets, craft fairs, festivals, charity events, car shows if you're into cars, those kinds of things. But where can you show up for community events? How can you participate in them? And when you're new to an area, that's a fast way to get in front of a lot of people that, that you can absolutely um, be present for, okay? Uh, local organizations, are there any organizations that you can join that align with your passions that allow you to participate with and be present and in front of people? Do you participate on local online forums like Nextdoor, any Facebook groups that you're a part of? Y'all, I know lots of agents that move to a new area, start a Facebook group that is specific to a niche that they have or their interest. And that's where a lot of their business comes from because they're hosting the group, they're moderating the group, they're actively engaged in the group. If you don't have your own group that you're starting, you need to check and see, um, is there a group that I can be active in and contribute to and give back to that I can also extract some business from? Groups that are filled with 5,000 other realtors are not what you're looking for. 
You're looking for groups that you can have an impact on. You can be the community expert. Um, neighborhood pages, if you have like, if you don't have one, create one. Or can you create a, a page for a specific topic or a specific group of people that you can then be the moderator of or the provider of information? Um, local schools, go attend their sports games. Go buy a ticket to their play. Join the PTA. How can you love on the students or the teachers or the faculty and the staff at a particular school? Can you be present there? Sometimes just volunteering at the school is helpful. If you already have kids that are at school age, volunteer at your kid's school. Have a presence in the school. Love on the teachers. One of my favorite things to do is to sponsor the back to school week, the teacher in service week, and bring meals that day to the school or have goodie bags for the teachers or the staff. It's like 160, how it depends on how big the school is, but that was one of my favorite things to do was just to be present in the school to get my name and my, my you know, introduce myself to the staff so that I could get to know them, right? Uh, business networking, please try to choose networking events where 5,000 other realtors aren't there. Try to choose networking events that are specific to small business owners um, or specific types of networking for a type of industry that you can have some tangent relationship to. But don't go to networking events where it's all realtors. You Those are important, but that's not how you build a book of business. Uh, that's how you build relationships with other agents. Other strategies that work would be um, interest-based groups. So meetup.com is a perfect place for you to find groups that have interests that you align with. Are Is there a group for uh, you're going to laugh about this, but I have a client that is actually a hermit crab lover. She loves hermit crabs. And she is in a group with other people that love hermit crabs. And so my point is there's a group for everything. Whatever interest you have, there's probably a group related to it. And there's an opportunity for you to either participate in a meetup or create one. Maybe you don't even realize where you live that there's other people who love um, a show called Married at First Sight. I'm just giving you a random example, but mm -hmm. I love this show called Married at First Sight. It's like trash TV, but there's a lot of uh, therapy that's happening. And so it teaches you good communication with your relationships. But shows like that, like The Bachelor, big pop culture shows that are popular, maybe you create a group of fans of, it has nothing to do with real estate, but it's a group that you can participate in, that you can give back in. And you're just going to make it known that that's what you do in the group, right? But it can be a hyper-local group. Maybe you guys have watch parties for watching those TV shows, right? You'll figure it out. But find interest-based things. Maybe you're a runner. Maybe you're a kayaker. Maybe you're a homeschooler. Maybe you're in a book club. Uh, whatever that related interest is, really get engaged and participate in those things. Um, I'm a big volunteer. I, I love giving back and serving my community. And so participating in food drives was a great way for me to build and expand my network. Um, there's an organization in Middle Tennessee called One Generation Away that actually donates food. Um, and uh, they actually rescue food from local grocery stores six days a week. Um, they do food distributions all over the community in various parts of town on Saturdays. People don't have to sign up. They don't have to give their financial information. They just show up and receive food. Um, it is a religious organization, so people will pray with them before they give them the food or put it in their car. Um, but I've participated in that, uh, that distribution multiple times. I've even sponsored a truck of food. It costs $1,000 for an entire tractor trailer of food to feed the community. And so if you have a philanthropic heart, maybe you show up and help do a food drive or you show up for a, a river cleanup or a park cleanup or something like that. Passion projects that are near and dear to your heart. Uh, those are things that you can volunteer at senior citizen homes, things that, um, and there are organizations like in middle Tennessee, there's hands on Nashville. Uh, it's basically all kinds of volunteer opportunities that are available that you can look up. Um, there's other 
websites like that all over the country that will identify a nonprofit that needs volunteers. And you can just go through the list of projects that they need help with and see, is this something I can dedicate my time or skills or talent to or money? Um, education, I want you to provide workshops, seminars, speaking events. Remember, there are other events happening around you that are not necessary, necessarily real estate related, but you might be able to contribute to it because you have some skill set, because you have some experience. Um, maybe they actually didn't think of inviting a local realtor to talk about it, but that ties into their theme. Think about your Kiwanis, your Lions Club. Um, all of those organizations that you might be able to piggyback and be a speaker at, but not necessarily join, right? Um, local businesses, you have to start going around to local businesses, get to know the business owners. You've got to promote the local business. Those are easy ways to build your network. Find the owners of the dojo or the craft store or the local plant shop or the cafe or whatever that is. You can be a guest on a podcast. You can be a speaker on panels. I love to find in um, new areas. I love to find, remember I told you to do your research. So I love to find kind of the movers and shakers in the vendor world. So the local home inspectors, the local lenders, the local title people or attorneys. If you're new to the area, find out who's doing the most events. Find out who puts on events in your area for realtors or for the public. Are there already people doing some things that are public facing that you can piggyback on, that you can join in, that you can participate on? Uh, but speaking on panels or being a guest on podcasts helps elevate your level of legitimacy too. Um, you could try some hyper-local content. Maybe you're a good writer and you go around to local restaurants and you review them non-real estate related. I follow a guy on Instagram that is the line cook perspective. And he is a line cook in a restaurant and he goes around to various restaurants and he writes a review every time he eats somewhere. It's not real estate related at all. But what has happened is I will comment on some of his reviews and say, I had a client that ate there last week based on your review and they loved it. Thank you so much. But guess what happens? People go, client, I wonder what she does. And they click on my profile and they know that I'm a realtor, especially if you're actively engaged in the group, right? I comment on all of his reviews because I appreciate his perspective. He's a foodie like me. That's one of my interests, right? So hyper-local content, whether it's food related or not, it could be small business related. Um, it could even be places of interest that you're also learning about because this area is new to you too, right? Um, you can host workshops for kids. Anytime you can get kids involved, now don't be a creeper that people have to worry about, but if you can get kids involved in gardening, building, like little arts and crafts projects, if you can talk to parents while their kids are busy, you have a chance to build relationships. relationship. If you're providing something that the kids are talking about, whether or not you go do career day at the local school and you give goodie bags to all the kids, the kids are going to come home and talk about it. They're going to be waving your card around and they just went home to 130 kids in the, in the neighborhood. Right. Um, but think about how, what can I do to engage the kids near me? Uh, you can be a local photographer. And I always joke about this because obviously our cell phones today are amazing and incredible. You can take your cell phone around town and pop pictures all over town as you're learning neighborhoods, as you're learning local venues, as you're learning local places of interest. Take pictures of it. Tag the places on your social media. Tag the businesses. So you can be the local photographer that just provides pictures all over town and it's just your own collection. So here's another tactic that I use when I moved to Asheville. There's a lot of photographers in, in this area, right? A lot of artists. And so I was looking for stock photography to use in my marketing because I don't want to go around and take pictures of all the things. I'm not a photographer. So what I did was I posted that I am new to the area. I'm looking for some local pictures by some local amateur photographers that I would love to be able to use in my marketing. Does anybody have any pictures of the local area that they would love to share with? 
I cannot tell you I had over 250, almost 300 people give me access to their drives of photos or they they picked five of their favorite photos of areas of interest, of their favorite restaurants, of their families on the Blue Ridge Parkway, um, all kinds of things. And I just tagged anything that I used. Um, I will get to you in just one second, Emily J. Um, I just use, I just basically said, make sure when you send it to me that you give me your name so that I can give you credit for the, for the picture when I use it in my marketing. Now, do you have to do things with it? No, that's your choice. I obviously was creating a picture book that I wanted to highlight local photographers. You can do that for $20 at Walgreens, right? But I got 300 people that I connected with that I just introduced myself as a realtor to without talking about real estate. Does that make sense? All right, Emily J, what were you gonna say, hon? No, I didn't have a statement. I was trying to clap because that's oh. an awesome idea. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, we'll give a clap anyway, because I agree. Um, I thought it was actually really smart. So are there ways, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, are there ways that you can engage with a big number of people without making it be about real estate? People don't really care about real estate. They care about lifestyle. They care about what's happening in the community. They care about what things to do in your community. If you are pumping out content that is all real estate, you are basically telling people to go to sleep. They're bored. They don't care about any of that. So focus on what matters to them. Where can I go to drop my kayak in when it gets warmer? Where are the best places to take my kids on a hike? Which parks are the cleanest or have water? Or where's the best place to take my dogs, right? If you have an emergency vet situation, where's the best place to go, right? Where's your favorite place to get pizza? I've, I've tried every pizza place in town, right? Which one is my favorite? Where can you engage with people without talking about real estate, okay? That's where I come in with hyper-local stuff. Um, local sports teams, again, if you've got children, this is easier. My kids now are 23 and 20. So I can't just be hanging out at little field little league fields, that's kind of creepy, but maybe I sponsor a team, right? If you're going to sponsor a team, don't just get your name on the t-shirt. You sponsor the end of the season party, right? You make sure that you're allowed, you know, that you're there for the games or that they put a banner up. Don't just put your name on the t-shirt. That's a waste of money, okay? But maybe if you think bigger about local sports, not little league, think about do you have a division two or a division three hockey team or baseball team or football team? Do you have arena football? Do you have roller derby? What local sports, is there golf or tennis, pickleball? What local sports are in your area that you might be able to have a clinic for kids or youth that you could host? Maybe you have a training camp, um, like I call it clinics still, but like for golf. If you're trying to bring golf to a marginalized community of kids that normally golf wouldn't be accessible to them. And maybe you know a golf pro. If you don't know one, you can go meet one from your list of people you need to meet, right? Find a golf pro in your community, borrow by him for two hours and host a clinic, right? That gets the kids at least interested in it. Think of ways that you can get, be active and engaged with people. Maybe you have a meet and greet with players. So again, maybe I don't know anybody locally, but I'm gonna leverage some neighbors or new friends that I just met or the local attorney and say, you seem to be pretty connected. Do you know any local sports heroes? Right? Maybe you do a meet and greet with whoever that local sports hero is, right? Um, maybe you have family day at the baseball field, um, something like that. Are you into health and wellness? Maybe you hire a yoga instructor to come do yoga in the park one day. Maybe you have a fitness influencer come teach a class um, that everybody just shows up and does this you know, urban dance jam class or whatever it is, or you host a, a rowing class or whatever y'all are into, you health and wellness people that I need to be, but I'm not. Um, but you get the point. Um, maybe you host pop-up events. So I love pop-up events because, again, I love to showcase local talent, right? Um, it is the fastest way for me to uh, meet local talent. And so maybe you host a pop-up event that has local artists, Right? Again, I have a very large artist community where I am. And so maybe there's an art walk that you 
post in the community where the artists bring the, the art pieces down to the stores on display for people to walk up and down the streets. Um, that's something you could host or put together. Um, there's also musicians. I've had musicians, singer, songwriter nights uh, where I've hosted those. I've attended those because I'm really into live music. Um, or your local caterers are also a great way to meet people. Because remember, caterers usually are working for large crowds. And again, I'm trying to get you to meet people more than one at a time, right? If you can be in a group, if you can attend events where there are more than one people, you can meet more people faster, okay? All right. One of my best strategies is to become a norm. If you don't know who Norm is, the old show Cheers, Norm would walk into the bar and everybody would go, Norm, because he was a regular there, right? I'm not telling you you need to be an alcoholic and go sit post up at a bar all day, but I have sold many a house from my stool at my favorite watering hole at my local bar. I've been a regular at a place that I go to all the time. And when I move to a new place, I tend to find places like that, that I stop in and do work, right? They have Wi-Fi. I grab a beer. I post up with my beer and I work on my computer and I get to know the regulars that come in the place. It doesn't have to be a bar. It could be a coffee shop. It could be a restaurant. It could be a wee workspace or a co-working space, but find a place that you can be a regular frequent visitor of get to know the owners, get to know the staff that work there and get to know the regular customers that come in, right? All right, tips for success and I'm almost done with you. Uh, tips for success would be number one, be authentic. When you move to a new place, it is your opportunity to be who you wanna be, right? Nobody knows you. Um, Randy, I'm gonna get to your question in just one second when I finish, okay? Um, nobody knows you so don't worry about having to be somebody you're not or trying to fit in. Be your authentic self. Trying to fit in is only going to help you temporarily. You're going to have to let people into your world, let them get to know you, let them know how you tick. And the only way you're going to be able to find your people is being authentically true to you. The things that you're interested in, the things that you like to do. The second thing I want you to take away from this is you cannot just be passive. Passive means I am going to hand you my business card when I meet you and say, here, call me if you need anything. And then I'm going to die or collect social security before you ever call me. Well, that's not what we want either, right? We're not passively just handing out our card. We are gathering and collecting contact information from the people you meet. Remember all that collateral material that I told you to have ready and those items of value that you want to offer people? This is what you're using the contact information for. I would love to add you to my monthly newsletter or I host an event once a month. I would love to invite you to it. Would you mind if I get your information so that I can send you an invitation? Or I would love to continue sending people your way. I would love to help you build your small business too. Let me get your contact information so that I can set up some introductions for you. Who would not give you their information said that way? right? But if you just say, can I get your phone number? They're going to go, don't call me, right? Because they don't want to be called. But I want to be able to connect you with some more people. So can I get your contact information return? Do not just hand out your stuff. Your goal is to get their information return. So earlier when I gave you that example about going to the fire station and dropping off a dozen donuts, you're not just dropping off a dozen donuts. You are going to walk away with someone in that fire station's name and phone number, even if it's just I would like to have a local fireman for my clients to be able to call in the event that they have questions or they want some more information about what kind of services, or maybe they want to bring their kids by on a tour or whatever that is. Who could they contact? Could I get a contact name and number for that, right? Just don't drop your stuff and leave. That's not building a relationship, okay? Your goal is to be authentically you, get contact information from them. Step three is to provide value. What things can you put in their hands? A market report, your newsletter, a buyer guide, a seller guide, how to prep your house for sale, how to build your business organically. If you're working with small business owners, maybe you put together a little guide for them about branding and marketing or social media strategies or incentives that you can offer to build your clientele. Like there's lots of 
resources that you can provide to people as the community connector, what can you give someone of value that they would appreciate and want? I want you to also think about people who are also new to the area. What kind of information do they need to feel comfortable and to feel settled in? Do you have things like that? Do you have a list of your favorite dog-friendly restaurants or dog-friendly patios? Do you have a list of the local kayak, you know, where are the best place hiking trails or places to drop in kayaks? Do you have a list of the local festivals that are happening and when they happen, right? What items of value do you have? And then the power in all of this is in the follow-up. You are not just going to meet people and then move on about your life. You're going to continually circle back around with them continually pour into them, continually put your face in front of them, continually send them items of value, continually check up on them and love on them throughout the rest of the history of time. You're going to add them and then you're going to continue pouring into that relationship. Don't be a taker, 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 a giver. Find things that, that would help them thrive. Find things that would help them attract who their target client is because you did all the homework asking who it is, right? But the power in building these relationships quickly is in the follow-up. My follow-up is a handwritten note to every single person that I meet, always. When you write a hand, I know this is old school, but I'm telling you it still works. Every person I've ever written a handwritten note to always texts me and says, I just got your note. Thank you so much. You're not supposed to thank me for thanking you. But they're so unusual that people don't give, do handwritten notes anymore that people are so grateful to get them, right? So I want you to follow up in ways that are meaningful to you. Sometimes I send little gifts. Um, again, I'm loving on people. I am pouring into them. I am supporting them. I'm helping them. My favorite follow-up call is, you know, we talked last Tuesday about who your target client was. I really think I have a great idea of who your customer base is and who you're looking for. I think I have just the person and I want to make an introduction to you. That's the best follow-up call you can make because you looked for an opportunity for them. What do you want your sphere to do for you? Look for opportunities for you. You will get that when you give that, right? So to recap, uh, number one, you need to identify who you know and who you need to know. You need to have your collateral materials in place, what things of value. You should have a vault, as I call it, a drawer of things that you go to that I have a list of 20 different things that I could give out at any given time to anybody based on what their needs are, right? Do you have that kind of stuff? If you don't, start working on it. Just make yourself a list and once a week, create each thing. Over time, you'll have all that. You're not going to have it immediately. But I also promise you putting it together is going to help you learn your area faster if you're new to the area, right? So who do you know? Who do you need to know? Get your collateral material together. Start making appointments with those people. Get in front of them. Start engaging in the group. Start engaging in volunteer activities. Hosting events. Participating in events. Showing up to events. And you can't show up and stand in the corner and be a wallflower. You have to show up and have a goal. How many people here do I want to meet? How many, when I go to this networking event, I want to walk away with at least seven contacts. Have goals for the things that you're participating in so that you remember this is not just fun. This is not just because it's part of my interest. But remember, you're not there to sell to people. You're there to get to know them. You're there to learn about them. You're there to influence them, to give them things of value. And you are going to, over time, insert that you're a realtor. Over time, you're going to tell them well, who your target client is. Who are you looking to help? Over time, you're going to ask them for opportunities. You know, I've partnered with you over the last year. I've sent you about seven people. Do you have, um, are you in a position to send anyone my way? Are you in a position to refer any business to me? Right? Don't be afraid to ask that. The way that I ask people to is I am looking to build a referral network of partners that are also looking for opportunities for me. We are looking for opportunities for each other. Can you commit to finding one opportunity for me over the next 12 months? If I ask 25 people that, that's 25 deals, right? 
Um, let me go to your questions. Randy said, when you're creating this content, do you add it to your personal page, profile, and social media, or are you doing it on a realtor page? So Randy, I personally, everything I do is on my personal page and then it gets sent to my business page. And the reason is because most of my audience on my social media um, are past clients, friends, family. They're already people in my network or my sphere, and there are a lot of other realtors. So most of my content is geared towards realtors. Um, if I am posting things for the rest of the people in my list, uh, it's always on my personal page. Back in the day, Facebook had very strict rules about not uh, promoting your business on your personal page. And then they started selling ads and selling all kinds of things. And that kind of disappeared a lot. You need a business page only if you're planning on running sponsored ads. But other than that, your personal page should be a reflection of your personal life that includes some sprinkling of your business, right? People want to get to know you from your social media. They don't want to know about real estate. They, that's a tangent necessity if they're in the market but they're really trying to get to know you. What kind of things do you like to do, right? Remember, you're also trying to make connections authentically with people. And so if you are into hermit crabs, like my client that I was telling you about, you want to attract other people that have similar interests to you. So posting about your hermit crabs is gonna let people know what kind of stuff you're into, right? Let people into your world. Let them know what you like to do, what things are important to you. I hope that answered your question. Uh, my brother, John Baldwin, is a local yoga instructor in Asheville. I love that. He also owns his own small business. Big deal oatmeal. I love that. So that would be a fantastic connection for me if I were hosting a yoga event for sure. Um, if I want people who are, you know, I, I would love that. So again, I would love his connection, Rachel. Um, so feel free to share that with me. I love that. Um, but again, now I could easily call your brother and say, I have a relationship with Rachel and she recommended you and that I needed to meet you. She said that we should meet. Remember when you have a recommendation from someone else, it's a whole lot easier to get an appointment because you're not a stranger so much. You have a mutual connection. Does that make sense? Um, let's see. I'm sorry. You got to go. I got you, Carlos. Um, any questions that I could answer about how I might have done? Um, I tried to cover pretty much my strategies that have always worked for me. Um, but does anybody have any comments or questions about what they need to do or something that I mentioned about how I might go about doing it? Here's your chance. I have a question sure. and I just a blanket apology. I totally thought I was on mute. No, don't worry. It's okay. And I'm like, my husband came in and we just had a great conversation. Sure. Um, sorry about that. No, um, uh, yeah, I, um, have, i made a list of five people, three that are here in Tennessee and two that are out of state okay. that I would love to promote their businesses, their small businesses. Um, and it's anything from a photographer to a, uh, home organizer to a coffee, whatever. Okay. Um, I guess maybe this is a technical question. What, is the best way just to, should I just get their social media stuff and then share it? Is that how you do that? Share it on my page? Yeah, absolutely. If I'm just trying to initially just kind of push them out there. Yeah, so I would go there. Them. I would definitely go there in person if it's a storefront type place, like coffee shop kind of place. Um, and either record a short little video in front of it or do an interview style with the owner and post that on my social media and tag them. Okay. That's that's I, the easiest way, honestly. Yeah, I'm looking, all of my businesses are just, they're not storf. Right, but are they, could you do an interview style? Could you like, you know, just talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, meet somewhere locally and say, hey, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about your business and record that you could as a video, but even as not as a video, you can just, I love storytelling as well. So okay. I met John, at dot 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 and here's what john does and i think you should know him right here's how you can get in touch with him here's a sample of his work here's how he helped me so storytelling goes a long way in making recommendations as well okay 
if people relate to those and resonate with those. Some of you mentioned that you came in late and you can't wait for the recording or you missed the first 10 minutes or so. What would really help me because you guys came from all over um, is either text me or email me on the information's on the screen um, just so I know where to send the link. Otherwise, you can also friend me on Facebook and I will repost this link on my personal page that you can get to. So um, it will be there. And I will also attach um, a link for that list of collateral materials so that I don't have to post that in the chat. Um, that will be on my personal page. So if you're not friends with me, send me a friend request on Facebook. It's Laura Dahl. Um, you should be able to find me. Um, thank you, Amanda, for the mem for the reminder. But I will um, post it on my page so that you can get to it. List of collateral materials that you might need. I hope that this was super helpful to you. Um, again, creating a sphere can happen from scratch pretty quickly, but it will take intentional strategies of you getting out of your house of you getting out from the four walls that you work in typically and being engaged in your community, learning as fast as you can about the people in your community, the small businesses in your community, um, highlighting things that you're interested in and actually pushing yourself to be more social than you normally are. The other part is try a different approach. Don't run down their throat that you're a realtor. Come from a place of value as service of what can you as the community connector realtor provide of value to them? How can you help them connect with more people? How can you bring more customers and clients to them? How can you help their kids uh, adjust better? Are their kids into gymnastics or cheerleading or um, you know track and field or something like that? What ways can you love and give back to people, strangers, building a relationship over time? Um, in what ways can you do that? I hope that this is super helpful to you. Um, thanks for showing up. I'm always here. Um, every Thursday, I pretty much put on um, a class. You're welcome to join them for free. Um, you can get to them by recoachcratezoom.com uh, um, all the time. You can get into the room. Uh, but follow me on social media. and You'll see what the topics are. And I hope I get to see you guys again soon. Okay. Thanks so much for being here. Take care. go implement it. That's right.